welcome to all the divi one and tv viewers i greet and bless all of you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen <laughs> Most high and glorious God, lighten the darkness of my heart. Give me sound faith from hope and perfect love. Let me, Lord, have the right feelings. Let me, Lord, have the right knowledge. so that i can carry out the task that you have given me in truth that you have given me in truth this is a prayer of st francis of assisi dear friends the god has blessed us with the word of god the gospel according to st matthew chapter 13 verses 1 to 9 the parable of the sower that same day jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach and he told them many parables th- many things in parables saying listen a sower went out to sow and he and he, as he sowed some seeds fell on the path and the birds came and ate them up other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil but when the sun rose they were scorched and since they had no root they withered away other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain some a hundredfold some 60 some 30 let any one with ears listen the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ dear brothers and sisters in christ jesus i would like to reflect with you all reflection based on this gospel episode before i begin the reflection i would like to narrate a small story of a businessman once he made a covenant with god the covenant was lord if you can help me in my business to come up i will give one quarter of my profit to the church he made a covenant with god not with the parish priest and as he prayed god heard his prayer he said well and first year of his business he earned he earned a lakh of rupees and as the covenant the agreement that he made with god was and he came to the parish church he paid 25000 one quarter of his profit and the second year he earned 20 lakhs and as the covenant that he made he gave 5 lakhs to the church the third year of his business he earned 1 crore of rupees and actually out 1 quarter of profit he had to pay 25 lakhs so he felt so uh, bad and hesitant 
losing so much of money to the church, he came to the parish priest and explained the covenant that he made with God. So, Father, you need help me. Uh, my heart does not, uh, uh, does not, is not willing to give the church so much money I feel that I am losing. And he requests the parish priest to solve his problem. And the parish priest said, okay, I will tell God and give you also the solution about it. And then this uh, business, rich businessman said, how, how, what are you going to do, Father? And how could you suggest about, from, uh, about it? And the uh, parish priest said, very simple, my dear man. I'll go back to the first agreement that you made with God and I will pray and tell God to give you one lakh of rupees per year and you will pay only 25,000. So there's no problem as you paid already earlier with that agreement. Dear brothers and sisters, for us to understand this parable of the sower and the seed, and we are also, this, the reflection called, the sermon is called Four Soils of Sermon. And we have heard quite often this parable and also the episode talking about the four paths connecting to the four types of people. And here I am with you to reflect how this one seed has fallen on the four, or the word of God has fallen on the four types of hearts. We do understand the four types of hearts. But what is this, the importance of that word of God is falling on the four types of heart? I will go a little deeper and explain to this. And the first type of path was the hard path. And I connect to the one of the hearts is the hardened heart. The hard heart, the hardened heart. Our hearts are hardened, it depends on the the situations, the circumstances, various ways, various reasons we have where a heart gets hardened day by day. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, to understand this and little more, as the seed had fallen the hard path and the birds came and taken away. And why our hearts are not able to get this word of God properly because our heart is all the time hardened because of a rejection, neglecting the negligence of our heart. We don't want to listen more. And our hearts are also not bothered to listen to the word of God in today's world. And we have a beautiful story of even the people of Israelites, how they were, how the prophets were crying out and saying, O oh, people of Israel, if only you would hear God's voice, hear the God's voice, harden out your hearts. And that heart, how God tried to make a covenant with the people of Israel. We have the book of uh, prophet Ezekiel or the uh, Jeremiah is talking about beautifully here. Chapter 31 verses 31 and 33. The days are surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In the verse 33, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. God made already their covenant, but the people of Israel, their hearts were hardened, did not understand God much. And how do we understand our hearts, dear brothers and sisters? There are so many said, so many reasons why a heart gets hardened. The first and foremost is the lack of understanding. Lack of understanding is nothing but not about the worldly affairs. Lack of understanding of God's own word is not able to understand. God speaks to us in various ways, but we don't receive that. We neglect. We also bring about the rejecting the God's word. Therefore, our hearts get hardened day by day. And Jesus himself tells his own disciples in Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 17, where after the multiplication of the laws, Jesus comes here asking the, his own disciples in the 17th verse of Mark's Gospel, chapter 8. He says here beautifully, And 
becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not receive or understand or perceive and understand? Are your hearts hardened? Jesus, disciples being with Jesus also, their hearts were hardened because they have not understood the Messiah well. The lack of understanding that takes place in our life as well. Therefore, we don't pay much attention to God's word. And second reason why our hearts get hardened is the bitterness, the resentment. St. Paul beautifully tells in his letter to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32, he says beautifully here, how our hearts get hardened. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with a malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Because of this, secondly, bitterness, resentment, our hearts get hardened. <laughs> brothers and sisters, when our hearts get hardened, we become uh, very recent, revengeful towards the others. And another reason why our hearts get hardened is isolation from God and others. In other words, not loving God, not loving our neighbor. And we have a beautiful episode in the book of Genesis chapter 4, the story of Abel and Cain, both blood brothers, how Cain made or uh, isolated from God and from his own brother. He has taken the whole matter in his hand and killed his own brother. So that happens when you get isolated from God. We don't listen to God's word. We don't listen to God's voice and hearts get hardened. And uh, another reason is very simple reason for us to understand is the pride. Pride is nothing but not allowing God to enter into us. Pride is something where trusting one's own self, not God. Trusting one's own self, not God, is a pride. And therefore, we lose the wisdom of God. We, know, we lose the wisdom of God when we trust our own self, not accepting. We have one reference in the Pro book of Proverbs, chapter 28, 26, verse 14. He says here beautifully, Happy is the one who is never without fear, but the one who is hard-hearted will fall into calamity. That's what happens, brothers and sisters, when our hearts are hardened. And second type of the seed fell on the rocky ground that I reflect with you all, the distracted heart. Hearts are well distracted as I always tell and reflect about our, my own founder, Francis of Assisi, how his heart was distracted by the worldly pleasures. And he wanted a great king, a knight for his people. How his heart was distracted whenever he wanted to take all the youth of his place and going for a war. He was distracted. His heart was distracted. His life was distracted. But we know when God revealed to him and he responded to God. Therefore, brothers and sisters, for us to understand much more and more how our hearts are distracted in today's world is the things that we have within ourselves. Wealth, and we heard, we have the beautiful episode in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19, the young rich man's heart was distracted when Jesus told him, go sell everything and give to the poor. Hearts are distracted. 
rocky ground the seed is grown up there 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 is no uh, depth the soil proper soil and therefore it is withered away in even ourselves when this worldly pleasures that we are attracted to our hearts are distracted because they are transitory and temporary pleasures only we get but most of the time we are busy with these kind of distracted hearts because anxiety the worries of the world we are so anxious what is going to happen next we are so much disturbed and distracted of the worries and this all the time tells live the present plan for the future and therefore as the seed is taken away by this kind of uh, no no depth soil therefore we lose the heart in the third heart here and also the distracted hearts also takes place because of two important thorns st paul's letter to galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21 the physical thorns through works of the flesh physical thorns and also our hearts are distracted by spiritual thorns same chapter 5 of galatians verse 22 onwards what are spiritual thorns where our hearts get distracted love understanding kindness though we, when we don't have then our hearts get distracted therefore brothers and sisters because this world tells us beautifully that we are all the time distracted by this world worldly affairs the third seed fell on the soil but the thorns pushed them down not allowing them to grow and thorns were pushing down not allowing them to grow and for us that i connected to the heart that is defeated defeated heart or in other words crowded heart our hearts are defeated brothers and sisters in various worries of the world cares of the world therefore every saint in this terms understanding god wanted them to be world class saints but most of them became worldly saints because before they could become saints they were living this worldly affairs and god wants all of us to become world class christians world class followers but we are busy with this worldly cares of the world therefore we remain as worldly christians only for us important thing where we are getting choked as the seed is getting choked with the thorns we are getting choked of our christian values and we have very many personalities and great man archbishop romero what a person he was what a person he was fighting for the south african citizens and there his heart was not defeated he worked for it though he was murdered or the shot dead but the heart that he wanted to bring the revolution change over that his heart was full busy the heart of the people the roman the government officials south african government was defeated and what happens to us brothers and sisters we are choked up with the with the world affairs today's media world digitalized worlds mobile world but we are forgotten that our journey and how our hearts are defeated we know brothers and sisters one of the ways earlier we are praying to god with our 10 finger 10 fingers folded hands and today take for example the mobile we are operating this mobile with one finger and we have become one finger generation whole world is operated by with a one finger and secondly when we count to money we use only two fingers unless you have got bundles of money and we we count the money with two fingers only how we are even our wealth riches are counted by two fingers but god is counted through our 10 fingers by praying to the lord and why our hearts are defeated because brothers and sisters we are not operating well our hearts look at the youth of the day look at the youth of today's trend where they have gone and their heart supposed to be the, the remote holding their hearts properly but because they are holding the gadgets of the world the hearts are defeated and the fourth type of soil was fallen in the good soil and produced 100 fold 60 and 30 
then my question goes to all of us is where is our, what is our percentage 100 60 and 30 and brothers and sisters jesus tells in the matthew's gospel chapter 28 verse 20 i am with you till the end of the age i am traveling with you i i am with you and that is called this heart a joyful heart great person sister rani mari of north india look at her heart fighting for the poor and she was murdered raped and murdered look at the heart of so many people where the hearts were joyful because their word of god was so powerful in them they gave their life life giving values there are so many people lived that life life giving values for christ they have changed their life journey. And one of the Franciscan saint, Father Maximilian Kolbe, he gave up his life for the sake of the other man who was imprisoned in concentration camp. And he said to that official, I will die in his place because he had family. And I, as a priest, no family. My family is the whole world. The universe is my family. Father Maximilian Kolbe, how he heart was very joyful, sacrificing for with the values of Christ. And brothers and sisters, we have very good many examples, even to Mother even our Mother Teresa. Look at her heart, very joyful heart, fruitful heart. She produced hundredfold. Father Damien produced hundredfold, serving the lepers. Mother Teresa seen every in every person, the Christ, life-giving values. And we have very good, very many saints in our, in our Catholic Church who have who received the word of God, live that word of God, and overcoming all the obstacles, all the defeats in the world, and their heart, heart was joyful and fruitful. And let me end with a small question. What type of heart is mine? Is it the hard? Is it distracted? Is it defeated or joyful or fruitful? All our hearts are fruitful. All our hearts are joyful because letter to Galatians chapter 3 verse 27, St. Paul tells, through baptism we put on Christ. When we put on Christ through our baptism, there is no Jew, there is no Greek, there is no caste, there is no color, there is no race. We begin to live the life-giving values of Christ. Therefore, our hearts become all the time joyful. Thank you and God bless you. Amen.